Hi guys, we're here at Blue Zone in Munich and we're talking to Piero Turk about the modern evolution of genes. I'm uh, Piero Turk and uh, I started working in a denim business in 1983. So during these more than 30 years, of course I could see a lot of changes. What did genes look like then? In the early 80s uh, is when the aging the gene started. Before you could buy only rinse or bleached. And then came out the stone wash. If I remember, the first one that did that was Edwin in Japan. But I'm not sure, you know, it's who started first to use the fire. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. it's the same yeah, story. Yeah, 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 yeah. Probably an influence between many people around the world. And then started all the evolution of aging and washing in the, the genes. And then came the sandblast. You don't need that anymore because then uh, after the sandblast came the brushing with machines or by hand. Instead of the stone came uh, chemical, the enzymes, the spraying the bleaching or the PP spray. The purpose of the washing is to have only a new pair of jeans to look old. Till few years ago, it was only stretch. Even for men, it was only stretch. What consumers wanted to have, it was uh, comfort. And with stretch, you have it. But now it's going back for uh, two reasons. One is the, it's connected with a, a cultural movement that is to consume less. Having raw denim and using it, it can last really for years. Then the other side is that it became popular again. The look of the 80s, you don't need to stretch denim. You just need a simple, basic, rigid denim. Rigid denim is sold more for women than for men. I'm talking about the majority of the consumers. Men still like to have some comfort. The technology went on so much that really changed the world of denim. Of course, because it's more sustainable, but also gives a future to the denim, because I think using polluting technologies, sooner or later it will be forbidden. Who's driving it? Is it the industry or is it the consumer demand? The industry. Consumers, they don't care. Because consumers, they must be forced to consume, and they can't buy always the same thing. So. That's why you have the evolution. You have to find something new to sell. You know, the contradiction between sustainable and fashion is really high. Sustainable is consuming less. Fashion industry can survive with that. Production of denim around the world is much more than consumption. It's like with the food, at the beginning with organic food, just small percentage of people would be able to pay a bit more to have a more healthy food. And you can taste it. You and know. you can taste I it. I mean, you can taste it. With, uh, with let's say, fashion, uh, if it's organic cotton or recycled cotton or normal cotton, you don't feel any different. The fact that big retailers are having some problems, are going a bit down, it's also because of that. And a part of consumers start to think that fast fashion is not so correct for the world. Production will move more and more to countries where it's cheaper to produce. But on the side of that, you have the opposite. You have small brands that try as much as possible to do local production. I take a shower in the morning because I want to be clean, not because I, want to, I have to meet people. And it's the same in the industry. If you want to choose to have a sustainable way to produce them, have your business, it's your choice. It doesn't have to be just a marketing tool to show that your face is nicer than what it really is. That was Piero talking about the modern evolution of genes. We also talked about the consumerism aspect of it because then it has become something where, where the industry pushes us consumers to consume more and more. It's quite interesting what's going to happen in the future. We're already seeing that more smaller brands, local brands popping up that take production back locally. So that will be the
future of denim in Pierre's opinion. Thank you for watching and see you next time.